Mm -mm. And we're live on YouTube. Hey, Ken. Jeffrey's here. Eric, Larry, John, Rochelle. I will do so. Hey, Tom. All right, I'm going to stay panelist today. How come there's no one in the room? What's going on? Only 140 people. Are we early today, Matt? I think I'm a little early. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Now I always say that, and then I look back half hour later, and we got 300 people in the, in the room. I'm so ha I'm so glad that Cam was helpful, uh, Lori. That's great. Tom is there. Jeffrey's there or here. Ken. Good morning, Ken. Robert. Uh, I'm a little bit early. Yeah. Frank, Ray, Thomas, uh, Run, Rajnikant. Hello there. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Angie's here. Good, 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 good. You know what, what? What drives me nuts when I pick when 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 I pick everything right and everything moves my way, and then the stock that I'm in starts lagging behind the ones that I didn't pick. That drives me crazy. Drives me crazy. But that's how it goes. Hope everybody's doing well. We'll be starting in about five minutes. I just want to give the room a chance to fill up. Let's see if uh, everything went out. Yes, you guys got the the VIP room link. Um, did the email come through? Uh, hopefully, everybody's making some moolah, some money. And look at you, Adam. That's good, good, good. Matt knows what to do with that. So let me just share my screen while we're getting the room started, just to give you some thoughts. I always like to give you my thoughts. Uh, let me this here. Let me the chat. No, Tom, I'm not on the beach. This is a green screen. It's just a green screen. <laughs> a lot of people ask, so it must look real. The, re the reason it looks real is because it's lighted and it's a professional green screen, but it's just a green screen. Although I got to tell you, I live on a 10th hole, and if I was sitting at my backyard, it would look not as nice as this, but pretty nice. But I could go to the beach club. T-Bus used to film his videos from the beach club all the time. We, we live in the same subdivision. So theoretically, we could do one from the beach. I mean, I have a mic that won't pick up anything. We could sometimes if you guys want me to. But then we'll have to stay there the rest of the day, and then the margarita. No, I don't drink alcohol, but... You know, we'll have fun. Wanted to show you guys something fun. You can see my screen, right, Matt? Am I sharing my screen? Yeah. Okay, I want to show you guys something funny. So we have some folks. We, we're having, um, we're, we're, we're doing a kitchen resurfacing project. And uh, my wife is trying to keep all the, all the pets uh, in the same place. So look at this, look at this picture. This is my bedroom. This is my bed. <laughs> You got, you got you got the the four dogs and then you got a cat back there in the background. Isn't that funny? It's pretty funny. I just thought it was a good picture. <laughs> That's uh Harry Megan uh uh what's his name? Harry, Penny, Sammy, and Megan. All having fun. There you go, PJ. How are you? Hopefully you got my emails. Yeah, you can't you can't look at you can't look at these stocks to uh, here, Rochelle. Take here, take a look. You can see it right there. That's my my wedding picture twenty four years ago. And that's a recent picture, and that's my cats. So you guys saw what my beds look like. <laughs> Bag of underperforming mics. Mike, sorry, Angie, I didn't understand. Raising hands, bag of underperforming mics. Sorry, I'm not. I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. But anyways, uh, you've seen my my cats. We used to have German shepherds, but the older we get, the uh, the less hair we want to deal with. Although I really want to get a Doberman, but I don't. I don't. I think I'm too old to deal with all of that. But um, I love German dogs. But uh, again, you know, we'll see what happens in the future. Life is life is uh, it's full of adventures. Oh, Kathy, you got 30% overnight on Google. Good, 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 good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, good. Hopefully, uh, 
Good things happen twice. Um, all right, we'll be starting literally in one minute, but here's what I actually wanted to show you, not my dogs. I just, I was, I just, she just sent it to me a few minutes ago. No, they don't, Ken, they don't, but they howl all at the same time. Uh, yeah, good, Adam. Glad to hear that. Good, 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 good. Okay, so you could see, guys, we, we went all the way down with, with some... With some gusto, this is this is a, uh, and now we're back at fair value. Literally back at fair value. I wanted to take advantage of this, and please don't don't say which trade I put on in in, in the pit, but um, I wanted to take advantage of it. I was about a, a dollar early, maybe something like that. But I think it's going to be okay. Maybe a dollar fifty early, but um, I'm, I like the trade a lot. I like where we're at, and uh, I think the market is going to come back up. You you see, right now we are in this. We are in this wait and see mode. Now, this right here, this this candle from Thursday, this is a warning shot. You got to take this very seriously. Why? Because there was no real fundamental news. It was selling pressure. It was. I mean, yeah, it was crude oil was triggered. It the Fed said something, but but that's not really. Um, uh, thank you, Adam. But we don't really we we don't really know we we don't really know how that's going to play out. So to me, to me. This is a um, a warning shot, and that and, and we have to respect that. And that means also, we, even without this, you've noticed my short list has been getting juicier. There's been getting there's better trades on the short list. Um, the mar the volatility has been expanding since Thursday. The dynamics of the market has gotten wider. Volatility has gotten wider. Kirit is asking what happened with LW. Kirit, let me ask you a question. I have an agenda here. I'm talking about some other stuff. If you want to know what happened with LW, wait till I get to it, if I get to it, or send me an email. All right? Tell us what scheduled events can occur in the overseas markets overnight that may move potential move U.S. markets. I know we can't anticipate black swan events. Um, generally, Dr. Al, welcome, Dr. Al. I don't think I've seen you here before. Uh Generally, it's the same reports as we have big, big FOMC, big, big, big federal data, their federal data, big events like that. And usually I usually read the over. Usually, usually, Dr. Al, if you watch my morning live feed, you will notice that I read those that data for Europe, for Japan and for China every um, every single day, about an hour before the market opens. They're not videos. They're they're live. But yeah, I mean, if you want to call them videos, I mean, the you you could you could call them videos. Um. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do know. I do know. Uh, Brett says I now focus on the spy movement all the time. Yeah. Oh, somebody listens to me, Matt. Look at this. The guy follows the spy and then founds looks for stocks that are stronger or weaker than the spy. Imagine that. <laughs> and it's working really well, isn't it, Brett? Now, one adjustment I'm going to be making, one adjustment I'm going to be making to in the near future, I'm going to be making one adjustment to the Pro Trader dashboard. Why am I talking about the Pro Trader dashboard? Because whether you have the Pro Trader dashboard or not, A, you're probably going to end up getting it because everybody else has it and it's really cool. But B, uh, I'll explain to you why. Right now, right now, uh, good, Ken, good. And I'm going to start using, you know, I realize TC2000 has real-time pre-market data. So instead of using t uh, bar chart, I could just use TC2000 and get everything in real time. It's just a little faster. So let me continue. Let me continue with this. So what I think, what I think is, uh, so so we actually, so let me back up. So we actually do do the pre-morning, the pre-morning uh, in uh, in the room. We actually do it all the time. Good afternoon, Rebecca. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, um, volatility's here. Till tomorrow. Now, the fact that volatility's here makes my job easier because volatility is a day trader's best friend. I'm going to say that again. And this is where you write down in your notes volatility is a day trader's best friend. Lack of volatility is our biggest enemy. You can't surf without waves, right? It's the same thing. We're getting a little waves. We're getting some movement here. We're getting some love. This is, I could play with this. Shorts are coming into vogue. Now, if we stay, if we could just stay choppy like this for the next two years, oh, you guys don't understand what we could do. The, the, the possibilities are endless. 
Will it happen? Probably not. Markets go through phases. They get really choppy, and then they get really wide. They get really cho they get really choppy, and then they get narrow, wide, narrow, wide, narrow. Just like a, a just like a living organism, you get high, you get hyper, you get sad, you get hyper, you get sad, you get balanced. But this volatility is really good. This is why I gave you folks in the in the um, <clears throat> in the room today. I gave you another. Uh, spread i gave you a strangle a long strangle spread i'm not going to talk about the strike prices here i'm not going to talk about the expiration dates i'm not going to talk about any of it i'm just going to say but do you see what happened what triggered me giving you this so you can all learn from it don't say i don't teach you when you see moves like this when you see moves like this the day before a major report when, where you don't know what the market's going to do and the market can do anything. And the odds are it's going to do something. You strangle the markets. You go a little bit above, a little bit below. Good, Ken. Nice, 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 nice. So so that's when you do that's when you you do long strangles. You don't sell strangles, you you buy strangles. Okay. The difference between a straddle and a strangle, straddle, same strike price. That's when you're looking for an explosive move, uh, stock um, earnings. But when you're looking for a move, but not an explosive move, st strangles are really good. That's right. Yeah. Or, or Paul, buy them when volatility is picking up, when you expect it to continue and move, move like this. Because if the market's moving, you can make sides, you can make money from, but look, make money on the put side. Make money on the call side. Liquidate one, hold the other. I mean, the world is your oyster because you have volatility. So this is why I recommend strangles. I, I hope you guys paper trade them. None of a lot of times they don't work out, but they give you very minimal gain. Very like you'll make, but very, very little. Like it's almost a scratch. That's usually how they work out, or they give they usually just scratch you because the market doesn't move, or it moves a lot and you do well. So um yeah, Ken, the only distinction is same strike price versus different strike prices. A straddle, a strangle is when you use different strike prices. A straddle is when you use the same strike price. So if I want to, if and then you can go long strangle, short strangle, long straddle, short straddle. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is not, this is not, this is not like brain surgery. What's brain surgery is uh, uh, one of the, the one was a strangle correct that you called on tier two. We'll, we'll, we will see. We will see. Uh, that way, that way, that way, you could really, really see um, when to play. See, most of you guys, here's the problem. It's it's like being in law. Okay, so let me let me kind of give you an analogy. Matt, this is a good analogy. I'll, I'll, this is a fun story, okay? This is from first semester of law school. Anybody here who's a lawyer or went to law school will understand exactly what I'm saying. So you start law school. The first year of law school, the, the game is learning how to learn the law and learning the law. It gets really easy afterwards because then you just have to learn the law. You already know how to learn the law. So that's why law school, that's why the people flunk out of law school because they have a very difficult time learning how to learn the law. Um, let's continue talking. So when I my first I I when I was very young and still to this day, I almost have a photographic memory on things that I want to remember. So I bought these flashcards, this big deck of flashcards. And I literally went through them about the, the, the cards were black by the time I was done with them. I mean, I used, I just went through them so much. I memorized the entire 700 cards down to every syllabus. This has something to do with the market, believe it or not. And the first exam that I had in law school, I barely passed. I got us like 71 or 72 and the professor, you know, he, I talked to him and, and, and I said, well, what did I, 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 I recognized, I memorized every rule cold. He's like, that's, that's the problem. I said, he said, you gave me a dissertation of your rules. I don't, I don't care about that. I want to, I want you to show me how to use them. And I never forgot that. He's like, I don't want you to list me the rules. He said, pretend, and he, this is the example he gave me and I'm going to give it to you. Pretend you're a refrigerator repairman and you've been fixing refrigerators for 100 years 
And you can literally look at a refrigerator and listen to it, and you will know exactly what is wrong with that refrigerator. Versus another guy who comes, who has to deconstruct your whole, I said, oh, I think I got it now. He's like, less is more. I understood that. A lot of people didn't. They, they The attrition rate is very high. But so the reason I get, I'm giving you these str strangles is not really so you can make money on it. That's why I'm begging you to paper trade them. I'm giving them to you so you understand when you need to start using them. So every time you see a market doing this and there's a report coming up or a big earnings report coming up, you strangle that sucker. You understand? Yeah, that's why I wrote Mind Traps. <laughs> you still get that one, Matt. That's a good one right there. Yeah. No, yeah, we're almost, Matt, we're almost break even on our uh, uh, trading pit trade. Be still in my heart. Be nice if the market can get it back up. Yeah, remember. So what am I expecting? Um, let me show you a, a better chart. It's here. One second, folks. One second. One second. Cyrus, I didn't hear from you yet today. I hope you're doing right. Yeah, the, the strategy has to match the market. So whenever you see a market going like this, it's and there's a CPI report and a PPI report, it's strangle time, baby. Strangle time, I tell you. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. I remember what I wanted to show you. Something that I show you every morning. If you're not in my morning live stream or you don't watch them, you should because I go through what I'm about to show you. So this is the intraday graph. This, These are the levels right here. Notice it looks like we're coming right back into this level right now. Now, we tried twice coming into this level, and we bounced off pretty hard. So I'm assuming we're going to come into this level and stay in this level, or or we're imminently bounced, about to bounce down from this level. Yes, long strangle. Michelle, it's not a stupid question because you can sell a strangle and you can buy a strangle. So that's not that's actually a really good question. I like good questions. Yeah, I I sorry, Cyrus, a lot of a lot of folks. So that's actually a great question. Straddle, strangle, long, short. You can go short or you can go long. So let's say the market's going wild and I'm expecting it to just die. I'm, we're going into holidays then you could sell a strangle or a straddle. So it's not a bad question. It's actually a really good question. See? So I just wanted to kind of show you where, we're, where we are in the big scheme of things. So the next level you really want to pay attention to, and I say really, you really want to pay attention to, is 517.60. Yes, I am. I now, and I will talk about that in a minute as well. I'll talk about that in a minute as well. Uh, QQQ... I just wanted to kind of frame things a little bit for you guys. I think you guys like it when I frame things. And on the QQQ, you could see also, we went down to this level and we're already in, in this 440 level. Please use these as guides. If you don't have them, log on to my morning video. Um, oh, BB. You know, BB, that's amazing because you've been with me for years. For you to say that, after being with me for over five years, that makes a big difference. See, what I always tell you guys, long-term relationships, not short-term one-night stands, long-term relationships. Now, BB and I have never met, but, uh, but, uh, but she's been with me for a long time, almost as long as Ken has. And look, I'm lucky to be part. That's what, I, that's what I'm talking about. Hopefully, BB, it's been getting better and better and clearer and clearer. So again, please keep an eye on these levels. On the QQQ, it's 440.15 and good. And 442. And if we can get above this level, then we're out of the doghouse. But right now we're still kind of in the in the doghouse right now. All right. All right. So just I'm just keeping you guys uh abreast of what's happening right now. And again, these levels are really important because I just extend them. Uh they're uh uh so anyways. That's what I wanted to show you here. You have the levels now. Uh, let me now go to, I have a thing here that I wrote. Oh, 
Yes, 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 yes. Keep your eye on this following ETF right here. This is the metals and mining. What I really like about the metal and mining, and I don't know if you guys have noticed this. I'm sure you have, because I know a lot of you have been playing metals, metals and precious metals. What I like about um, this one in particular, and I think you'll agree with me, is it doesn't it doesn't just use precious metals. It uses both. It u it uses multiple metals. So if we were to look at the constituents, here's here's what I'm talking about. So because I I what I'll see often quite often is I'll see gold and silver rally and then copper go down or vice versa. What I like about this is you got copper, you got gold, you got steel dynamics, you got new core, and they're all moving right now, but they're not all moving the same day. And I don't know why I keep forgetting to tell you this, but this is a really good ETF in case you want to be involved in metals right now. And metals are breaking out. Uh, but this is a great ETF to have if you're looking for metals and you don't want to experience a lot of, uh, hey, do, should I go Should I go into gold? Should I go into silver? Should I just buy copper? Um, frankly, they're all looking really good, especially when Fed starts backpedaling. That's a good time to be in, in metals. And again, I'm having a very, I'm personally having a very hard time right now deciding which metals you know, you know, it's kind of like when you go to a a, a a a hamburger place and they have too many choices and you don't know what to, what to order and you don't end up ordering anything. That's where I'm at right now. I keep I I kind of wish only one was rallying, like copper or gold, but most of them are, and uh, and that's making very difficult for me to choose. And I've been kind of sticking to the sidelines, but this is a really good way to avoid that. Where should I put my money? Because this ETF and it is an ETF tracks all the metals and matt i want you if possible to add this unless it's already there uh to the data miner please okay please uh that's the second thing i wanted to talk about the third thing i wanted to talk about the third thing i want to talk about is this now i brought this up yesterday in the morning and i showed you how it was down here pre-opened but boy oh boy as soon as the market opened this thing swung back up but look at how aggressively it's moving higher. Now, why am I bringing this up right now? Remember I told you I don't think the kid got it through his dense head. Head. I mean, look, the market's only thinking 50% right now. So the kid still thinks there's a 50% chance he's going to get that stupid bike. That's why I thought I, I ultimately think we're going to break down because he's going to get to a point where he's going to say, hey, there's uh, 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 there's only a 10%. I better, I better start – reading thrasher magazine and start getting into uh start start getting into um skateboards and stop thinking about bikes I mean, my bmx career is over but what brett just said or maybe ice roller skates i don't know i'm i'm making all this up but but my point is i don't think bonds are ready this is why i was very critical i didn't think we were there yet and based on what the market the kid market same thing was thinking not there yet, but I think this is going to come up, and I think tomorrow's CPI report is going to help. <laughs> Kirk, you're getting you're getting very frisky there. That's pretty funny. Feel a bike, eh? <laughs> wow, you're uh, you guys don't mess around, huh? Feel a bike. All right. Ah, that's pretty funny. I gotta admit. Okay. So I think bonds are after tomorrow and Thursday, we're going to see one of two things. They're going to test this area and they're going to drop back down or they're going to come into range. What's interesting is the market is not, I can't really say today it's cooling off. It's more, it's more of continuing the rebalance from last week. Uh, but, but there's no major sector as, and I checked on this. I, I know I checked on this. I'll show you again, just to make sure we're still in that, on that same page. Yeah, here's my yeah. you can see right here there's no major standout 
which is why I wasn't really nervous to buy into weakness this morning because or just today because I did not see this as I, I, I didn't see anything sticking out. So while volatility is high, volume right now is not. Matter of fact, and, and that's one of the things you want to always look at. Hey, what's the volume doing? I can I think it's not I think it's going to come go back up into the triangle and just kind of fuddle around there. Um I think it's going to come back up and fuddle around here unless tomorrow's data is really really bad. And if and even if tomorrow's data is really really bad and I think it's I don't think it's going to be really really bad. I think it's actually going to be pretty good. Um I I I don't think the market is ready to I don't I th Here's what I think. I think, I personally think, there's zero chance in hell the kid is getting his bike before uh, uh, Thanksgiving period, somewhere around there. But the kid still thinks quite, he's now like, yeah, uh, you know, his, hey, are you getting, Johnny, are you getting that bike? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I, I think I'm getting that bike. Yeah, it's still coming my way. I don't know if that kid's getting that bike though. But deep inside, he's now thinking maybe I'm not getting that bike. Maybe maybe it's it's possible. So I'm thinking October, November, somewhere around there. I still think I still think the Fed has topped out. I don't ha I don't not there yet with them. I I know a lot of my uh, the people I work with uh, believe that rates are not going down. I still believe rates are going down. Yes, Anastasia. Yes. Or buys enough to move them, yes. So, so I, 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 I'm, I'm still gonna, I'm still going to. One thing that served me really well in the market is not to go off the reservation, and not to say, well, because what a lot of people do is they take what's given and then they, they make hypotheses, they jump off of them. I don't, I don't do that. So I'm going to go with what the Fed is saying, and what they're saying is they're going to lower rates before the end of this year, and they've topped out, and they were pretty certain about that. I think that's going to happen. I'm not going to bring the election into this, although although Trump will fire uh, our Powell, and Hassett will probably take over, but we can't – we don't know. We, we, we don't know what will happen. We don't know what, what will happen. We have no idea what will happen. But the Fed said they're going to not raise rates anymore. The fact that they're not raising rates anymore is already cemented into the market. And I think that's what where the bubble the market is going through right now. I think that's kind of where it's where it's mo it's moving. Yeah. So so again, that's that's the, that's the thing I wanted to bring to your attention today. That the bond market is coming back up. We have the CPI tomorrow. Speaking of the CPI, and I'll be very, very brief. I want to get into the trades. I think we are all I think we're all kind of saying the same thing there. I think we're all in agreement there. Um, so Bowman is speaking tomorrow. Like she needs to really speak right after the, the CPI comes out. No, keep your mouth shut, but she's gonna speak anyway. These two are speaking tomorrow, and then we've got FOMC minutes. The minutes will be very, very interesting, although I, I think the wind will be blown out of them with the CPI because I think the minutes will say, well, let's see how things go moving forward, but we're not in a hurry to do anything right now. Notice, remember before, we're going to have four cuts, five cuts, three cuts, uh, summer, uh, fall. Uh, we're not in a hurry anymore. No, it's not a meeting, Gaston. It's the minutes. It's not the FOMC meeting. It's the minutes. It's 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 the minutes from the last meeting. Okay, it's 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 a, it's a, it's it's not the same thing. <laughs> so again, let's keep an eye on it. Now, what about the actual number? I already told you this morning, the year on year. It's it's probably going to be higher, like three point five, maybe even three point six. This is baked in. This is the key. This is the key to your to to this is the key to the, to the kingdom right here, right here. If this number is three point seven, we're making progress, yay! If it number is three point nine, oi ay 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 give vault. Oh, it's gonna be bad. All right, so three point seven, three point six would be good. Anything with anything below three point eight, hell, even three point eight would be like, hey, at least it's not getting worse.
They'll spin it. Trust me, they'll spin it, but not 3.9. I think the numbers will be, I think the numbers will be okay. I, I think the and I'm only talking about the core, the what I highlighted here in blue uh, a year ago. Okay, let's talk about stocks. So how should we position ourselves right now? How should we uh how should we trade? We stay cautiously optimistic. We only trade the strongest stocks. We we don't we don't play around. We don't play around with uh, with monkey business. We don't. We only go for things that are on the outlier, the the st stocks that are really telling us, "Hey, we want to go up. We want to go up. There's no reason for us not to go up, and we want stocks that are already proving themselves." In addition, if we get low vol, if if you get good volatility, you don't have to worry about volume too much. But if you have low vol, if you have low volatility, then we're get, we, we have to add volume to the mix too. All right, um, I'll do the short side first. Matt, are you putting something in? No, I'm I'm asking a question about the software. Mm -hmm. Marge, we don't need to lower rates right now. You know, the reason the Fed lowers rates is is to help the economy. I don't think the economy. I think employment employment is good right now. So, and again, food. The only thing I could see is. Food prices and I, I'm 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 not buying it. I'm not buying what they're selling. I'm just telling you straight up. I'm not buying what they're selling. All right. All right. Um, excuse me. I need to set an alert real quick. Okay, sorry about that. Let's now go through our. Um... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If you guys didn't take the exit and and make money on KKR, I I like this. Matter of fact, here it is on the. We're we're out of the stock officially. We get out right here at the open. Uh, at, I think nine thirty two or something. But if you didn't get out, uh, look at the uptrend. It's got a very nice uptrend. Thank you, Gaston. Okay, let's let's begin. Yeah, but 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Remember, feel free to if we're not in a stock, you can ask me about it all you want. I don't care. It's it's good for everybody to learn. Happened very quickly. That's why it's called the pit. Did I miss any Apple? I talked about Apple this morning. And if you remind me, I'll talk about it in a few minutes as well. Okay, guys, um, let's do the short side first. You thought I forgot about this one, didn't you? Manny, I, I don't Pepsi's not on my radar right now, but I have plenty of stocks that are. Let's focus on those, okay? So um Starbucks, remember I gave this to you last Friday? Well, it's not too late for the party. 88. Uh, maybe 88.50 somewhere in that ballpark uh, the triangle yes the triangle looks yeah I'll talk I'll talk about it. I'll bring it up don't worry, I, I got you covered, Sean. 17 days out. It would be nice to go 17 days out on anything we do right now at this point. 69 Delta is fine. It's close to 70 enough. Your spread here is tight. 88 put. DBX, draw box. Another cocker. Yeah, we're, de we're breaking lower. Now, look. The stock is not running right now. It's kind of consolidating on the way down. So you may end up being in it for a few days, you know. Um, it's just how it is. I mean, some some are swing trades, some are day trades. But if I was looking at the stock right now, I would, and if I was a fund, I would want to sell it. So we're kind of waiting for funds to come in and look at it from the same perspective um, that we would be looking at it, okay? 
Just want to make sure you guys understand that. You can put your stop right here. It would be great because if it goes back here, you don't want it. That's what I said, Cyrus. You got to be a little patient here. Uh, 24, 76, 25. Uh, 17 days out would be good. We'd go 85 delta right here. 24 puts right there. But you wouldn't. But let's say you get into it, and in three, four days, nothing happens. Are you going to lose a lot of money? Probably not. Probably not. All right, let's continue. GL, we talked about this a while back. Made a low. Tried to rally. Not really. Probably going to chop, 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 and then come right back down here. You could put your stop right above this pivot right here. One twelve seventy seven. Uh, on this one, you can't really go. You, you'll have to go ten days because you. You know, I don't want you to go thirty eight days. It's too much. Seventy six delta. One ten put. Okay. Very important. Eighty three low eighty threes. Eighty. 330-ish, something like that. 10 days out. Uh, no options on these. They are horrific. No options on these. Just look at these spreads. Bad spreads. You know, one stock I regret I didn't get into this morning is PayPal. I really wish I got into PayPal. We'll cover it in a few minutes, but I really like how it's moving. But it may it may be, you know, it may be a little too much right now already. But I like PayPal. I like PayPal. Uh C M uh, C S A Comcast. Oh, this looks beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. This one is now is aggressive. See, this one is ready. So if this one jumps back, you don't you, you probably wouldn't want anymore. But this looks like it can really move down. Look at the Hakanashis on the daily. Good, Karen. Good to hear that. Nice. That makes me happy. I'm glad you guys you guys did that. That that's good. That makes me happy. Uh I would probably, you know, it's a little volatile, so I'd probably go to the $42 level. I don't have a stop on PayPal. Are you talking about PayPal, Paul? We're not talking about PayPal. We're talking about Comcast. I'll get to it. Okay, we're above the VWAP on the spot. Let's see if we stay there. And here I would look at um, 17 days out, and I would look at a 78 delta 41 put right here. Oh, the stop right here, Paul. I'm glad I asked. About about 40, low 42s. Yeah, somewhere somewhere like right above this pit, this this area right here. Ralph Lauren, new one on our list. Did you see this one, Matt? Gonna have to stop wearing those polo shirts. Yeah, imagine that. Little break here. Think it's got more to go. For now, I would put my I would my target would probably be around right here, the one sixty level. I think it'll naturally drop down there. These clothing stores haven't these you know star retailers retailers are are, are not doing all that great right now. We we got to be really careful with the retailers, you know. Uh, I would go right into the gap, about ten dollars above as my stop, maybe one seventy eight. In this case, I would go thirty eight days out, because we may be in this one for a while. It this is only a twenty day break breakdown right now. Yeah, yeah, and with interest rates, if interest rates stay elevated for a while, it's going to be harder and harder, because folks will borrow less money on their credit cards but employment is good right now see that's the thing the, the good employment really um helps helps us out a lot a lot 180 puts sorry if i'm interjecting my commentary but right here the 180 puts 
Lulu. Uh, Lulu. Now, don't 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 sell here. It's building a base and it's going to drop. So I would put an alert below here, maybe 352, 350, 50, yeah, around that area. I think you, you, um, what was that stock that we shorted in the beginning of the year that I called that dropped like 140 points? You guys remember the name? My mind is going blank right now. No, not Carvana, not Carvana. Uh, huh, yeah. Thank you. Imana. Like this stock. See the stock look. Goes up, drop. Builds a base, drops. Builds a base, drops. Builds a base. So I think, we're, thank you for reminding me. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I think we're we're going to see something similar with Lulu. I think Lulu is going to build a base, come down. Build a base, come down. Build a base, come down. And I think it's just starting because, as you could see here, it has quite a lot to go. And if it get past this level, the next level is 288. Now, Roger, why are you so bearish on Lulu? I thought Lulu is one of your favorite companies. It is. Fundamentally, Lulu and Crocs, I believe, are the two best clothing companies out there in terms of businesses. But we're trading. We're not, we're not, trying, we're not investing. So it's very important for you guys to be able to separate this, separate how much you like a stock, how much you like a politician, because money's money. And money's green and it has a smell to it. And, you know, again, I'm, I'm not trying to change your opinion on anything. I'm just saying try not to get to fall in love with anything and, and try to be, try not to be so um, loyal to, be loyal to people, not not to companies, okay? Okay, um, that's my short list. Let me now do my long list. PayPal. I really like PayPal a lot. I, if PayPal comes down a little bit, I would probably end up buying it, uh, like down to the VWAP, which would probably be right at the 66-something level, low, high 66. Um, I, I really like PayPal right now. I would put my stop right below this pivot at about 64. I would go 17 days out. Uh, I don't want to give you Lu uh, Leonard. I don't want to give you Lulu options right now because Lulu needs to break down. Lulu can consolidate for another two weeks. I would much rather you guys set an alert on Lulu than 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 take a Lulu trade. Remember what I said. I don't want to give it to you. I would rather set an alert. Yeah, there was a reason why I didn't give it to you. I didn't forget. I just didn't want to give it to you. And also, it's very expensive, so when I do give it to you, I'll probably give it to you guys here, and I'll give you both options for it, something like that. Uh, six, uh, high 63s, low 64s. This pivot would be perfect right here. If you want to go tighter, you can, but I, I wouldn't. Uh, I'm not bearish on lows at, low at all. Matter of fact, Uncle Lauren, I'm getting bullish on uh, low, and I don't think I was ever bearish on Disney. I'm pretty bullish on low. I haven't looked at Disney. I'd have to I'd have to take a look again. But let's focus on this. We would look at the 73 delta which would put us at the 65 calls. Yeah, I'm still bullish. Well, I don't know about Disney, but I'm I'm I know I'm bullish on lows low because I've been asking Matt his opinion and I've been looking at it on my on my daily and intraday which means I'm 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 looking to make a move. And I think I might have mentioned it to you guys on Telegram, too. Thank you, Dean. Bob, let me let me finish mine, and then I'll have time. I'll, I'll go over. I'm not in a hurry. I don't have a webinar today, so I'll gladly uh, indulge you. But let me, uh, let me uh, go through this. FCX, I told you my love for metals right now. Although, I would prefer you guys buy this right here, the, the XME. But FCX, I like FCX. Uh, it's a little overextended from the eight-day EMA, so we're going to hold off on it right now. Low, I mentioned LOW. Yeah, LOW, LOW, ticker LOW. And I'm, I'm, I'm literally, literally, I'm not kidding. I'm looking at it right here, intraday and daily, and I really like what I'm seeing. And I might have mentioned it again. I don't know if that's the one, but I think it was. But I am looking at it right now actively, actively. Okay. Uh, too overextended. No soup. Mm -hmm. 
I like this one. A little, not as overextended because it's a smaller stock, but I'd I'd rather wait for a pullback. But I'll give you this one. I'll give it to you. Uh, thirty five stop, thirty eight days to go. Eighty nine delta four forty versus five. Volume is picking up. That's the other thing. Look at volume. It's picking up here. It looks good. Amazon. Can't believe I'm giving you Amazon again. Um, I would prefer you wait. For don't do Amazon right now. Don't wait for it to go to the eight day EMA right here, right here. If Amazon today went to the eight day EMA, I promise you, you would get, you would have gotten an alert in one of our services. Isn't that correct, Matt? That's correct. So I'm telling you, if Amazon hits the eight day EMA, I'm going to buy it. <laughs> I don't know how else to, I don't know how else to say it to you. Um, yeah, that's what we want, Karen. That's exactly what we want. It's exactly what we want. So we're going to wait for Amazon. But if I was buying an option, I would buy the, uh, I think it was buying the one, 17 days out right here, 180. I was going to say 182.50, but it, they, they don't have it for that month. Right here, 180. But Roger, it's expensive. Yeah, I don't want you to have a lottery ticket. I want you to have a good delta for for every dollar it moves. Good, good, Ben. Glad to hear that. Glad to, glad to hear. That. Next one, uh, EEM. This is the emerging markets ETF. I like emerging markets right now. I think emerging markets are going to go up. The only problem is notice how gappy this asset is. So you're if you buy an option, the option will go down twenty five percent, up fifty percent. It's all over the place. Uh, so be careful here. Be careful. I'll give you the option. These options can handle. These are synthetic assets. They can handle a lot of size. Just heads up. So if you're a big player, they can handle it. Forty one call right here. Seventeen days out. Tech. Thomas says, why do you use four screens? I don't use four screens, Thomas. I use uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screens. Let's continue. Four screens. If I was only so lucky. Still within its range. Still within this range. Not break it out too hard. Uh, I would put a stop loss at about 4640. And I would go to the 17 days out. And we would go right here, 70 calls. But they're, the spreads are bad. You're going to have to work this order or just forget about it. Yeah. Why do I use so many screens, Thomas? So I can keep you guys out of trouble. And I could use different time frames. Exactly. And the Hakanashis and the Global View and my indexes and my sectors. And then my tele, you know, t communicating with my wife and seeing the pictures of my cats. There's a lot of stuff going on here, John. And and then about and then what about Clyde? Yes. All right, Sean. Thank you for that. Uh, next one, TKO, the wrestling R world wrestling uh, federation. I think it just entered this gap right here, Matt. Look at this. Folks, let's be careful here. Let's wait for it to get back down. Not a, not a, not great, but maybe a little overextended right now. I would wait, Ken. I would wait if you can. Holex. A little choppy, but look at the trend on this stock. He's helping, Cyrus. He's helping. He's doing some research work right now. Yeah, he's he's doing research work. He's researching uh, underwater basket weaving theories. Yep, I do need uh, I do need a screen for trade alerts from Clyde. Oh, Lance likes TKO. That's good. Yeah, TKO is uh, is a good stock. Good stock. Seventy six eighty three. Moondog is in the house. We'll do 38 days out on this one. This one is cho choppy. The choppier, the more time you want, okay? Um, 
79 delta, 38 days out. If it doesn't do anything in the next few days, get out of it. 75 call. There you go, Larry. Here's an interesting one. British Petroleum. A friend of mine works for this company. They he 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 really likes he really likes what they are up to. Uh, a little bit above the eight day EMA. I'll give you the option, but I prefer you buy it around the thirty eight dollar level and then put a stop around the thirty. I prefer you buy it right around the thirty the high thirty eights, and I prefer you put a stop in the mid to high thirty sevens. And uh, we will go ten uh, seventeen days out on this. We'll go with the 88 Delta, although but that by that time, it'll be a higher. It'll be like a 99 Delta. But we'll go with the 88 Delta. We'll go with the 38 call when it's priced right here. If you could set yourself an alert right here at the 8-day AMA around 38.61 and let me know it hits it so I'll get in on it too. Um, That's it. That's all I've got for you today. Um, somebody wanted me to look at a stock. You guys wanted me to look at something. There was like one or two stocks somebody wanted me to look at. I'll gladly look at it. Oh, Disney. Yes, yes, yes. Disney. Thank you. Uh, Disney is right below. The, it looks like it's building a base. What I would want to see from Disney is I would want to see Disney go above 120. Because if it does, the odds are it's going to go and hit the 123 again. I, but see how... See how it's below? See the, the cross right here? You want to see the yellow above the red. You want it, you want it, you want it to, to you want th this green to be right here. That's what you want. Yeah, we got out of it a long time ago. OC, I'll take a look at OC. Oh, beautiful. See how it touched the eight day EMA and now it's roaring back? See how it hit it right here? This is the intraday. This is nice. This is very nice. VST. I'll look at VST. Uh, getting a little choppy. A little. Ch I, I like this better than this. This is getting a little choppier. CCJ. Mm, uh, I'd, I'd like to see it making higher highs. I don't know about this. And and I don't like the. It's more. It looks more choppy than anything else. Nvidia. Nvidia, I would wait with Nvidia. I don't like this. I want to see it. I want to see it above this price range. This is all recorded and it's live right now, uh, and you can get to it in real time. Somebody asked me about Pepsi earlier. I'll I'll look at Pepsi. There's nothing going on with Choppy. Nothing going on. All right, all right, Matt, do your thing. Give us seasonality. We do have a pit trade currently on. Thank you for not disclosing what it is. Um, I'll let you know how it does. It's not really doing anything right now. Uh, oh, the Apple update. Wait, Matt, I forgot the Apple update. I'll just, I'll, I'll take over for, now. Yeah, look at that. He's quick. He's quick to give it back. All right, Apple. Um, Apple, this is Apple right here. Apple is... In a nasty descending triangle. Nasty descending triangle. And if Apple breaks down, it's going to be very, very bad. I think the only thing that can save Apple, really, really save Apple, is earnings. And uh, earnings are coming up in about a month. Be careful. If Apple breaks down, it could really pull a lot of market cap with it. So it's not looking good. It had a triangle right here. It broke down. Here's a, Here's an... See, it happened here, and it broke down, and now it's happening here. It can break down. Be very, very careful. No monkey business. All right, Matt, now you do your thing. All right. All right. Here is seasonality to the long side for the sectors. Um, looks like we're getting even more bullish <clears throat> than yesterday. Uh, most things are looking very good. I think consumer discretionary was the strongest yesterday. Um, but utilities are very strong. Tech looks good. Industrials look great. Energy also looks good. And uh, even basic materials look pretty good.
seasonally, that is. Uh, if you go over to the short side, the only thing that really pops up is real estate, although uh, financials and energy are also coming, which means that the price action is choppy. So we'll really have to refer to the 10 day hold. Uh, and 10 day hold says we are mostly bullish. Consumer staples are dropping off a little bit. Uh, most other things are coming back up, uh, and real estate is still weak. So consumer staples and real estate weak. Uh, strongest utilities, consumer discretionary, industrials, energy, and basic materials. So a lot of your more commoditized uh, ETFs, if you will. And... Going back to the <laughs> going back to the long side, uh, we have two hundred and fifty eight items, pickers, if you will. I don't want to say stocks because fifty of them are ETFs. Uh, to the long side with a seventy percent or higher accuracy, which is pretty good. It's not the highest I've ever seen. Uh, once we start getting up into the Mid-300s, that's when seasonality is really strong one way or the other, broadly across the market. If we run over to the short side. Short side is getting even smaller, so we're starting to see the shift to the short side. I mean, the long side, excuse me, away from the short side. The one thing that I was looking for that I didn't, see here being that the commoditized sectors were really dominating 10 day hold actually let's look it over here hold that thought one moment hey guys the the the, the, the trade that i gave you on the spy uh, this morning in the VIP room, spy trade. That was to take advantage of the uh, of the CPI report tomorrow. Just FYI. Interesting. So we saw most of the commoditized sectors um, dominating the ten day hold, but what I don't see is our ETFs aligning, with that, which is interesting. Now, that being said, depending on the type of company, uh, they, they might react one way or the other to the commodity increasing. Like, for example, if you're an oil distributor or crude oil distributor, refiner, they tend to make money, or more money, if the price of oil increases because their margin is usually fixed. So if it's $300 and they can crank 5% or it's $500, they can crank 5%. That's good for them. But other companies doesn't always work like that. Uh, not everything is as uh, price sensitive. For example, the cost of oil goes up for the producer. We're, we're perfectly comfortable as consumers that the price of gas is going to go up. If underlying commodity prices fluctuate in other industries uh, that does we don't have the same appetite for the increase in prices. So uh, one, I guess, would be food. It's kind of a tough one, but, you know, eggs, bread, all that stuff remains relatively stable uh, week to week versus oil. It's probably a better example, but we're doing it live. So that's all I got. Uh, let's look at 10-day hold, grab the number. 129. We bump it down to 60. It's 271. So that's actually pretty good. Say we are starting to lean long in the next two weeks. That's pretty much all I got. Roger, you have anything else? No, nope, that's about it. Um, I'm not seeing any. Hold on a second. My questions just jumped off, so let me just see if there's any questions. 
Nope, that's it. All right, folks, we will see you later. I got too many computers here. We will see you later. Uh, and, uh, oh, tomorrow I'm going to have a very special class. It's going to be very, very cool. It's going to show you how to take advantage of turbulence in the market, and it's happening tomorrow after VIP room. Otherwise, I'll see you guys later. If any questions, let me know. And be patient with today. And remember, we have CPI. I'll be there every step of the way tomorrow in the uh, uh, live room that starts at 8 a.m. Bye, everybody. Oh, I, I have one more thought because Adam made a good oh, point. Please, please. Go so, he said most grocery stores or stuff like that play the repackaging game. So less for the same or higher price, right? So you get instead of 10 ounces, you're getting 9.5 and they keep the price stable. That game is a lot longer term. So in, it's an energy-backed stock, right? Uh, the, the, you'll notice that there's a lot more volatility on energy stocks because they're pretty much getting hedged in real time. So as crude is rising or falling, you'll notice energy stocks for the most part are tracking with them. That doesn't play out the same with like a consumer a uh, good distributor because the prices, you know, they can't change the packaging. There's that fast. There's a long supply chain in between. So those moves have to come more based on earnings reports versus everyday market action. Now that's all I got. Have a great day, everyone. Bye, everyone.